Hi and hello guys. So inherently the Amazon Echo or the Amazon Echo Dot doesn't permit streaming music over Wi-Fi through the AirPlay or uh, the UPnP protocol. So today in this video I will show you as to how you can stream music to your Amazon Echo devices through AirPlay and UPnP protocol. So there is nothing that could be done in terms of software. So you need to add uh, some hardware external to the uh, Amazon Echo to accomplish this. So for this, we'll be making use of a single board computer. In this case, I'm using an Orange Pi Zero board and then a Bluetooth dongle. This is a Bluetooth uh, audio transmitter dongle. So in all, uh, this should cost about less than $15. I will leave the links, purchase links in the description of this video. So well, you might ask me as to why I'm not using the Raspberry Pi Zero W board, which already uh, has the Bluetooth built into it on board. So if you have already tried connecting a Bluetooth speaker to a Raspberry Pi Zero W board, then you will appreciate the difficulty involved in connecting an external speaker to the board. So this is the cheapest possible solution for enabling AirPlay to your Amazon Echo. So once again, I'll leave the purchase links in the description of this video. This is very easy to implement. And after this implementation, you'll be able to use your Amazon Echo as a multi-room speaker. So if you have multiple uh, Amazon Echo devices, you can uh, create multiple such hardware setups. And now you will have a uh, multi-room audio setup using Amazon Echo. So without further delay, let us get started. So to get started, uh, we need a couple of software. First one is the SD formatter. This is used to format the SD card. And then uh, the Win32 Disk Imager uh, to copy the uh, image onto the SD card. And then finally uh, the PuTTY. Uh, this is used to SSH onto the uh, Pi board. Say if you are using a Mac OS, uh, the software might slightly vary. Say for example, uh, instead of the Win32 Disk Imager, uh, you might need the HR.io. So I will leave the links for most of them in the description of this video. So apart from that, finally, uh, you need this uh, text file. I have compiled the list of commands that you need to execute in order to get this done uh, successfully. So I will attach this uh, text file also in the description of this video. You can download it from there. Okay, so without further delay, let us get started. So first step is to format the SD card. Select your SD card, choose format, choose OK. Once it is done, you can close the exit and then choose the image. So for this build, uh, I'm using the Ambient for Orange Pi Zero. Again, I will uh, attach the download links in the description of this video. Say if you are using some other board, uh, you can uh, download the suitable images. So, but the outline process will basically be the same for all the boards. So once the image has been successfully written onto the SD card, exit and eject the SD card from the PC and insert it onto the Pi and boot the Pi. So once your uh, board boots, you can get the IP address of your board uh, from your router and then input it into this space over here in the putty. Choose yes. And then uh, the default login for uh, Ambient is root and password will be 1234. On the first instance, you will be prompted to update your password. So do that. So this username will be your uh, board name. So in this case, I'll use Pi. And update your password again. So you need not uh, provide any uh, such details like as in like uh, full name, room number and all the stuff. You need not do that. So finally, uh, the final step, choose Y and press enter. So from here on, you can uh, easily follow the steps that I have given in the text file. So it is pretty self-explanatory. So first step is to update your uh, board. So once the updation is done, uh, next step is to upgrade uh, the OS.
choose yes so one of the uh, added advantage of the orange pi zero board is that it has got an on board uh, wi-fi chip so for ten dollars you are getting a wi-fi chip as well as an analog audio output port so i think this is the deal over here so the next step after the upgradation is to configure the wi-fi parameters so just follow the steps copy and paste the requisite commands control x y to save and press enter so after that you need to set up your wi-fi credentials So in here, replace your Wi-Fi underscore SSID with the SSID of your uh, Wi-Fi and then your password. And then again, uh, press Ctrl X to save and then Y and enter to save. So after you have stored your Wi-Fi credentials, turn on the Wi-Fi adapter. you'll get a failed message just don't bother about that so the next step in the basic configuration is to set the appropriate time zone and the last step in the basic configuration uh, is to set your audio oh. so the last step in the basic configuration is to set your audio card so we'll be using the onboard audio card so by default it will be card number zero control x yes enter and now so with the basic configurations done we can uh, reboot the board and then get started with the installation of shareport sync we indeed uh, really have uh, mike brandy to thank so the shareport sync is the root of root of this project so without which we won't have a uh, airplay support for our amazon echo so word of thanks to him before we restart so once the board restarts the first step is to enable the overhead daemon so this is used to auto start boot programs on uh, boot So if you get some uh, kind of a failed notification, do not worry about that. That is absolutely normal. So the next step is to install the dependencies for the Shareport Sync. Just copy and paste it. So once the dependencies are installed, the next step is to copy or uh, clone Mike Brandy's project. I will share the links to the github page of his project you can just go through them so after cloning uh, move into the project directory and auto configure the installation so this step might uh, take some time or do not panic or uh, reboot the board so it is absolutely normal for this step to take some time So after that is done, uh, copy and paste the configuration script and then finally install. So final two steps to auto start. Shareport sync on boot. So before we shut down the board and restart the board, if you want, you can uh, change the name assigned to the Shareport sync uh, feature. So remove the two forward slashes and change the name over here. 
you can assign whatever name you want so in this case i will give it a name called amazon echo dot control x yes enter and now sudo reboot so after rebooting the board the shareport sync will auto start and boot so as soon as i plug in the adapter onto the board or a socket or wherever you can uh, see a fast blinking light this means that the device is ready for pairing so now we will move over to the amazon alexa app and pair the bluetooth transmitter with the echo dot so i'm using the web interface of the amazon echo alexa app so this is very uh, the process of pairing the adapter is almost uh, similar to the any other uh, bluetooth pairing process choose pair a new device connected to at underscore bt underscore dev now that you're paired next time just say connect my phone so that is it now you are connected so let us open a music streaming app and stream music over airplay to our amazon echo device so now if you see the airplay service is appearing on our streaming app so now if you see it is playing through our amazon echo device So with this setup that I have shown uh, today, you can uh, have multiple echoes around your room or house and uh, you can create a multi room audio setup and you can stream music to your uh, Amazon Echo or Echo Dot through AirPlay. So there is one more app which also I would like to point out which is very useful for uh, multi room audio streaming. So this is called the Vale or Vale or however you pronounce it. So this works basically uh, just on AirPlay uh, protocol. So using this you can uh, simultaneously stream the same music to multiple AirPlay devices or uh, stream separate music to separate AirPlay devices. So right now what I have got is just a free version. It doesn't do much but if you get a paid version from the Play Store you can uh, make full utilization of the features that it has got okay so that is pretty much it guys so i hope that you find this video useful and informative and if you feel so please subscribe for more such videos thank you